Welcome to Red Tastic. Story 1. I, 67 male, had recently sent messages to my two children, 28 male and 27 male, telling them that since they act like I'm not their father, I will be cutting them off from my life and that they should not attempt to contest my will in the event of my demise. For context, I have three children. I have two sons with my first wife before losing her to a brain aneurysm. I married my now wife, 52 female. She had one daughter from her previous marriage whom I adopted after our marriage. Our daughter, 21 now, has always been a quiet and sweet girl, always looking out for the welfare of other people. When she joined our family, I spent time with her being the best father she had as she had never had a father figure in her life. My sons had accused me of playing favorites, but I jovially pointed out that they always have me around, but would rather hang out with friends. This didn't stop me from always being there for them. I was very present in their lives. I went to all their games and presentations, took them on vacations, and we celebrated as a family. I gave them whatever they wanted, because I didn't want them to feel the loss of their mom. Fast forward to when they left for college, I was the one always reaching out to them, always calling and checking on them. They only called when they needed a favor from me and hardly ever inquired about the welfare of their mother, sister, or even me. Their excuse was that they had tight schedules and hardly ever had time to call. Knowing how college can be tough, I didn't bring it up again, although I wouldn't have minded a call from time to time. Months would go by without a call from them and they rarely replied to my texts. Also, they only came home twice, to celebrate Christmas with us. This was not the same case with my daughter. Despite a schedule as a medical student, she always made out time to call her mother and me at least twice a week. She talked with us, told us about her activities, and came home whenever she could make time. She's on a full scholarship, so I spend the bare minimum on her education, and she has never been one to request much. Always content with what she had. My sons are currently working with reputable firms and I never see them. I only get to know what is happening in their lives when I check their social media. I'm fairly comfortable, so I don't need their money. I just want to be able to communicate with them once in a while. Recently, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer and although I have a great chance of beating it, I decided to host a small event with my family. I called my sons and sent them messages concerning the event. I hoped to break the news to them on that day. It's been a month now and neither of them has returned my calls nor responded to my invites. I'm heartbroken. I feel I've been abandoned by my children despite all my efforts to maintain a healthy bond with them. My wife and daughter have been the ones offering me emotional and mental support. My daughter calls me every day and has been making plans to see me. I made up my mind that my sons are undeserving of my fortune. I provided them with the best and when I needed them, they acted like I meant nothing to them. Yesterday, I sent a message to them threatening to cut them off of my life, since they have shown that they do not care for me, their mother and their sister. They both called yesterday and we exchanged some angry words. I also subtly threatened to remove them from my will and leave the house for their sister. Now I'm being blamed for going too far and being inconsiderate about their work schedules. Am I the a-hole? Update. My first son called back after everything settled. He apologized for his absence and silence. He opened up to the challenges he has been battling. He feels guilty about his actions, but he didn't want to burden us with personal problems and thought it wise to keep it from us. We rescheduled a private meeting between the three of us. Update 2. I met up with my sons and had a long talk. I told them about my health condition and the ongoing treatment. Things got emotional, especially for my first son. Although I have forgiven them, I cannot get past the thought that they only apologized after I threatened them with their inheritance. A part of me feels like they're more interested in what they can get from me. I have maintained my decision to will a higher percentage of my properties to my daughter. The rest will go to charity. Not the a-hole OP. It's your will, your properties, your fortune. You should get to do whatever you want with it. You should know that this will cause more tension between your daughter and your sons, however. Your sons are wrong for making you feel neglected and unloved by them. No matter how busy they get, they should always respond to you when you reach out to them. 
If you don't reach out to them, then that would be a different story. But you do, and they ignore it. That means you're not one of their priorities, and I can't imagine how hurt that must make you feel. Thank goodness for your daughter and wife. I hope you beat cancer. If your sons still don't make a change regarding their relationship with you, don't just cut them out of the will, cut them out of your life too. Story 2 I'm 17 and in school. My mom married a guy who has a 3-year-old son. I also have a twin brother who's 17. I feel like I've become the babysitter for my stepbrother because I'm the girl of the family. My brother's doing football and never has to babysit. But me, I had a job at a summer camp taking care of kids for some extra money this summer. And now my mom and stepdad expect me to babysit this kid for free whenever it's just us home. At first I tried really hard making him good food, playing outside and helping him with learning to read and stuff, keeping him busy and playing together. But it was hard because I'm in school and trying to get into college for next year. And I could only study or do applications after his bedtime and I was never getting enough sleep. I got angry at my mom for making me the babysitter every day and her and her husband and my brother not doing enough. And she had so many excuses like she and my stepfather working, my brother having football. And I have habits too, but I can't do them because I've become mama number two. Or really, mama number one, because I spend way more time babysitting than her or anyone else. But my mom wouldn't let me go out after school and leave my stepbrother alone after preschool. I have to pick him up every day when it ends on my walk home. And I can't join the school play because of it. So I've stopped being a real good babysitter. I do the bare minimum to keep him safe and nothing else. No more games or reading. I do my own homework instead. I keep him quiet with kids YouTube or naps or whatever. I don't cook much, but sandwiches and reheat leftovers. And leave him alone to eat or not eat, instead of giving into picky eating. And after a while of that, he stopped talking so much. His kindergarten teacher said something about his language learning regressing instead of improving. He's been acting up more around my mom and stepdad, but he doesn't tantrum anymore around me, because I just leave him alone to scream it out until he ties himself out. I'm doing way better with school, and I'm finally able to get sleep, but the rest of the family is stressed a lot because of his behavioral problems that started up coming after I stopped playing mama. Am I the a-hole for stepping back and just doing the bare minimum so my stepbrother eats and doesn't get hurt? Not the a-hole, OP, but you might need to talk to someone outside your house about this, especially when you mention he's begun regressing in his development. He's not your kid and is not your responsibility, but he is a small child who needs care. Is there a teacher or a trustable guidance counselor who you could speak with and get advice from? An aunt or uncle or grandparent who could advocate for you with your parents. This situation is untenable and is a potential recipe for disaster in the long run. Now for some comments. Not the a-hole, he's not your child. And you should not be expected to lose your teenage years and your ability to live your life because you have a baby stepbrother. I would be very clear with your parents that you are unwilling to give up your entire life for him and that as such you will keep him alive but you will not be raising this child who is not yours instead of getting your education and moving on. A gentle everyone sucks here. Your parents are obviously terrible but purposefully neglecting the innocent kid isn't morally right either. If you are not willing to parent him, which you absolutely shouldn't be, you're 17, you're barely out of childhood yourself. The right thing to do is refuse to babysit at all and let the consequences belong to your parents where they ought to be. A call to CPS is probably in order too. Not the a-hole. This isn't your problem. He isn't your brother. He's just the kid of some guy your mom married. Expecting a 17-year-old to give up their life for that makes them so blatantly the a-hole that what you do is minor. Now, having said that, you need to reiterate that you aren't happy with this situation. And if they want his behavior to improve, they need to leave him with a qualified child caregiver. Also, get the F out of that house as soon as you can. A dorm room will feel really nice compared to your current living situation. Story 3 My mother, 68 female, raised my sister, 36 female, and me, 38 male. In extreme poverty, I won't go into excruciating detail, 
but there were many nights where my mom wouldn't eat just so my sister and I could have a decent meal. Fortunately, my sister and I were able to make something of ourselves and acquire jobs that gave us significantly economic mobility. As you can imagine, vacations were never an option growing up. However, my mom would talk about the various places she wished we could visit as a family. When my sister and I became more financially secure, we began taking our mom to said destinations, averaging about one a year. These trips are very important to my nuclear family and serve as a way for my sister and I to thank our mom for her countless sacrifices. This started about 10 years ago. Now my sister is married to a great guy, they have two kids. I also have an amazing wife that has blessed me with three children. Current issue, I've explained the above to my wife. However, she thinks these trips are exclusionary and feels the entire family should attend. Currently, my family takes at least two vacations a year. One that's just us, sometimes with grandma, and one where we go somewhere with my sister's family as well. Always with grandma. I definitely understand that I'm taking one more vacation than my wife per year, and I said I wouldn't have a problem with her taking her own vacation, that's to her specifications. For example, a girl's trip, solo vacation, staycation, vacation with the siblings, etc. She has never taken me up on this offer and insists the issue is the exclusionary piece of these trips. She feels there should be another trip that includes the entire family. The kids are young, oldest is five, so I don't think they're impacted too much. And when they're older, I'll do my best to explain the significance of these trips to them. Also, my brother-in-law is very supportive and encourages us to go as often as we can. I honestly don't see myself backing down from the nature of these trips, but I also don't want them to cause unnecessary conflict in my marriage. So Reddit, am I the a-hole for going on these trips even though my wife feels excluded? If so, I welcome any recommendations on remedying the situation. Edit. It seems I've conflated nuclear family and origin family. Thanks all for pointing that out. I'm reading your comments and appreciate your insights. My wife and I take about one trip every six-ish months. That's just the two of us. Some are staycations where we get a hotel in our city and explore. But most are true destination vacations. Our average getaway is about seven to 10 nights, childcare depending. Post-marriage, the longest trip my family and I have taken was seven nights. This was pre-kids though. Post-children, the average trip is about three to four nights. Edit 2. No, my mom doesn't come on the trips that are reserved for my wife and me. LOL. The vacation layout is such per year. One that's mom and sister. Two that are wife and me. One that's nuclear family, sometimes grandma. One that's entire family. My family plus sister's family plus grandma. Edit 3. The trips are to various destinations. We've done camping, domestic travel, and international travel. And yes, I'm willing to revisit an area that either party would like to travel. The trips with my wife are definitely nicer. She's more into big cities and loves to explore by day and club at night. That definitely adds up. LOL. When I'm with my mom and sister, we're typically at the hotel by 7 and none of these trips present any financial hardship for my family whatsoever. I would cancel everything to prevent my wife and kids from experiencing anything close to what my origin family endured when I was younger. Final edit. I showed this thread to my wife, which resulted in a very fruitful discussion. Apparently, she has never liked the trips my sister and I took with my mom, even prior to our marriage. I was completely shocked as she's never been alluded to feeling this way. We discussed where these feelings were coming from and eventually she stated our yearly trips remind her of her tumultuous relationship with her parents. And whenever I'm gone, it makes her abusive upbringing all the more apparent. My wife and her parents haven't spoken in years. I won't go into detail, but there's some unprocessed trauma there. I've encouraged my wife to seek therapy for this in the past, but she's always insisted it wasn't an issue. During our conversation, we identified other areas of my wife's life that have been impacted by her past experiences. She now thinks it's a good idea to seek therapy to reconcile the past hurt her parents have done. Obviously, I'll support her through this and we'll make any necessary changes to facilitate the healing process. No a-holes here. 
OP because it's not like you're not taking vacations with your wife or purposely avoiding your own family. You and your sister want to pamper your mother together since it was always you guys as a unit for a long time. Your wife should be more understanding in my opinion. People are really missing the point of you and your sister wanting to have solo moments with the woman who sacrificed everything for them. Parents are only in their children's lives for so long and they deserve to have moments together. It's not the same when you include others. Now for some comments. Not the a-hole. I don't see why it's a problem. So you're never allowed to go on a vacation with your original family again? You love them too, and the dynamic with children and spouses is always different. I know I would love to have a vacation with my original family, but because everyone is married with kids, that's out the window. If you were only going with them and not your wife and kids, I would say you're the a-hole, but being as you go on plenty a year, I don't see the issue here. Not the a-hole. You take two vacations together a year, and you are well off enough to each take your own separate vacation. If you weren't so well off, I would see you differently. But I think having your wife take her own vacation is a good idea and is the most reasonable compromise. Married people don't have to do everything together. And sometimes, some distance can make marriages stronger since it gives you something to talk about. Leaning no a-holes here. I can understand why your wife would feel that way, although I can also understand why you and your sister would want to take your mom without your spouses or kids. Definitely without your kids. I don't think you're being unfair to anyone to be honest. I get you wanting to make another entire family trip and bringing her along probably wouldn't change too much. But bringing your kids along would definitely change the entire dynamic of the trip.